So Go High Level has a funnels uh, feature. It's, it's very similar to Click Funnels, almost identical. Um, you really don't lose out on any functionality. So if you're lose, using both Click Funnels and Go High Level, uh, just cancel Click Funnels <laughs> and go with GHL. Um, now, how we get to the funnel section? Obviously, this is done inside of a sub account, and we just select sites on the left, and then funnels up top. Okay, and let's go ahead and go through the steps of creating a funnel. So we'll just hit new funnel. Go high level has some templates. Uh, I don't like them. I don't think they're good. They're not good at converting leads. I prefer to build out a proper, simple, proven landing page. Um, Go High Level's funnels are more like websites than landing pages. Uh, but anyway, let's use, let's create one and we'll just call it example. And now we have our first funnel. So inside funnels, you can actually create steps. Um, and let's go ahead and open this up so I can show you guys. So here we are. We'll have to create the first step. So let's call this one landing page. The path could be slash landing dash page, and we obviously don't have a click funnels to uh, funnel to import, but the option is available for you guys still in the uh, the dinosaur age, whatever the saying is, and using click funnels. So we'll hit create step. Now we have our landing page. Now let's say we want to. Um, redirect people after they opt in on the landing page to a booking page, right? So we can create a second step and call it booking page. Okay, and then we want a maybe let's say thank you page. Yeah. Okay, so now we have these three funnel steps. So People will show up or, you know, uh, th they'll land on the landing page. And then after they submit their information, they'll come to the booking page. After they book in, they'll end up on the thank you page. Now let's go into actually building all this stuff out, right? So let's hit create blank because we don't want to, I don't want to use one of the templates. We'll hit create blank. And this is what the funnel builder looks like. So it's very simple to use. Um, we'll just go ahead and add a section. If you guys have used any drag and drop website designers, this is similar to that, almost as simple as you could get it. Um, you'll have sections inside of rows or columns, and then you can put the text or picture or video or button inside of those things. Um, but what we're going to do, let's go ahead and create a headline. Seven day pass. Say so, yeah. Seven day pass. And then we want to add in some subtext or maybe let's just do a picture. This obviously is not a guide on how to build out a funnel for every single niche. This is just how to use the go high level funnel builder. Um, maybe there will be an actual funnel course in the future. I'm not sure. But Let's see, so we have the headline section. Let's add another section here, and we'll do one column, and then we want to just add a, let's say we want a picture right here, right? We can drop in a picture, and then maybe underneath this, we just want one more column, and then we let's say we want a button um, right here. And then we want this button to open up a form that collects the leads information, right? So what we'll do in order to, to collect that info is we're going to hit, hit the button and make sure it's selected. And then we'll scroll down and what the button does is open a pop-up, right? So we can have the button do a, a number of things. Obviously, I'm not going to go through every single setting on here. Otherwise, this video will be hours long. Um, but for this example, we want it to open a pop-up. And then what we'll do is we'll click pop-up in the top left, and we're just gonna add our form in here, right? And then this form could be an opt-in form, something similar to this, right? Then if you're, I'm 
kind of getting uh, off off topic quickly. If this form automatically pops up without them actually hitting the button, um, you'll just want to uncheck this. Show pop up on exit. Okay. Now let's go ahead and save this. Okay, and we'll preview it. And obviously we didn't, yeah, we didn't put the image in here. But let's say this is our funnel, and we want to, the lead wants to opt in, right? They want to sign up, or they want to claim their seven-day pass, whatever it is. They would click the button, and then this form would pop up. Now, a lot of people will put the form right on the page. I like using pop-ups. Um, some people also like to redirect, so like this button would take them to an opt-in page. The reason why I use pop-ups and would never redirect is because the loading time for a pop-up is instant, but redirecting to another page can take some time. So if you can use a pop-up, make things nice, simple, crisp, quick, uh, it's just low, you know, we're lowering resistance, you definitely want to do that. Okay. Now, what happens when the lead actually submits this form? Well, we want to, let's go back into our funnel builder we want to take them to the second page, right? So what we'll do is inside the funnel builder, we'll select the form. And then on the left, right here under actions, we are going to hit go to next step, okay? And then we'll hit save. And now what's gonna happen is when this form is filled out, it's gonna go to step two, which was our booking page. And we can see that by just going and hitting back, letting go high level load. Cool. Um, and then once they submit that form, it will take them to this page, the booking page. Okay. Now I'll show you guys how to add in a calendar to the booking page. Uh, but we're not there yet. Let's let's go back into the landing page because there is one more thing uh, that's very important, and it is that a lot of people are going to be filling out this form on their cell phone, which means you need to optimize this uh, for people's mobiles. So what I would, what I suggest more than anything else is don't just click mobile and start resizing things because you might want the size, the text size to be different on desktop and mobile. You might want to have a, even a different image on desktop or mobile. You might want to, to structure things differently, right? So what I suggest doing is coming here, highlighting the section, right, and duplicating it. Okay, we're just going to hit clone. And now we have two of these sections, right, that contain our headline. The first section we're going to turn off on mobile. So how we do that is we hit advanced and we're gonna turn it off on mobile. The second section, we're gonna do the opposite and turn it off on desktop, okay? And we're just gonna do the same thing with all of these sections. So this first one, we'll turn off on mobile. Second one, let's shut it off on desktop. And we'll do the same thing with the button, yeah? Mobile, and off on desktop, okay? So now, this looks the same, but let's say on the desktop settings, we want this size to be a lot bigger, right? And I know it allows you to do this, but there are some, some details to where this, even though Go High Level allows you to change the size based on the device, there are situations to where you're going to want to rearrange things, um, and this just isn't always efficient. You need more than this, right? However, even if we increase the mobile size all the way up, we went to mobile, it's obviously not affected, right? Go ahead and save it. Hit it back. And now let's talk about adding in a calendar onto the funnel. Okay, so let's go to the booking page and create a blank one. Now, same thing, we're going to want to add a section, add a row, and then add our element. And in this case, we just want to add our calendar, so we can drag and drop the calendar. 
we don't have one set up. Um, I'm just going to pause this video so I can set up a calendar just for to demonstrate the funnel. Okay, so I just made a, a quick, simple calendar. And now we can drag and drop the calendar right here um, into our funnel. If you want to make any edits to the calendar, it's not done inside the funnel. So if you want to change the, the layout of this, if you want to change the available times, if you're going to change the name of this calendar, uh, you will do that in the calendar settings outside of the funnel builder. However, what I do want to go over is when we have the calendar and somebody books in, we don't want to just leave them sitting there. We want to send them to that third step in the funnel, uh, the thank you page. And how we do that is we'll just come in here under calendar settings, and on the bottom left, we're going to hit go to next step. All right? So this means when they hit continue and they book in an appointment, um, it will actually redirect them to the next step in the funnel, which was, let's just save this, which was the thank you page. Right here. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a quick, simple thank you page. Thanks for booking. <laughs> All right. And now what we're going to do is let's go back now that this is saved and let's test out the funnels flow. All right. So we'll come into the landing page and let's hit preview. Yeah. Hit preview page. Highest converting funnel ever. We want to sign up and we want to leave our information. Okay. okay, so remember, once we opt in, it should direct us to the calendar page. So let's test this out and make sure it's working. And it does. Now, when a lead uh, leaves their information and opts in, that lead is now inside of Go High Level, right? So if you have, if, if this is for a client, uh, I don't know, client John, then, and somebody goes to that landing page that you created for him and they opt in for the information, even if they exit out of the page right now and don't book in a class, John is inside of, or that lead is inside John's contact list on Go High Level. Right, your client's contact list. It will be on that sub account's contacts. Uh, so they don't have to complete the funnel to enter Go High Level. They're in it right now. Right now, let's just book in a quick appointment and test out the rest of this. Okay. Schedule. And remember, if you want to change any of that, uh, you would do that in the calendar settings. Okay, cool. So we booked an appointment and it successfully redirected us to the thank you page. So I'm going to exit out of this. And now we know that uh, the flow is working properly. And one thing that you guys should check is go into your settings here and you do want to link this funnel to a domain, right? Otherwise the funnel won't be live. So we have a few ones, uh, a few domains here. We're just going to link it to this one, I guess. And then we'll want to hit save. Okay. And a couple other things, if you guys are running a pixel, so if you're running a funnel and you're getting that traffic from a, uh, let's call it Facebook, then you definitely want to be tracking the data with the Facebook pixel, right? S same thing with TikTok or whatever other sources. You want to be able to track uh, the bottlenecks, how the booking page is converting, how the landing page is converting. Um, and also if you're optimizing your ads for bookings, if you're optimizing them uh, for opt-ins or if you're optimizing them for page views, you'll need a pixel attached to do that. So Facebook actually has a guide on how to uh, attach the pixel and it's very simple, but what you'll want to do is get the pixel code from Facebook and this is where the head tracking code will go. Right in the funnel set, uh, settings, you hit head tracking code. And what you'll want to do next is actually go into each of the individual funnel steps. 
and hit settings and then under tracking code you want to enter the uh, header tracking code for each funnel step All right and you want to do this for each page so this way Facebook knows exactly how many people end up on the landing page on the booking page and on the thank you page and another side note um, I've just I've seen a lot of people make this mistake in the past when people in order to track bookings, you have to track how many people end up on the thank you page. So 50 people end up on the thank you page, you had 50 bookings. If 100 people end up on the booking page, you don't have 100 bookings, you have 100 opt-ins, right? And the reason being, you can't get to the booking page without opting in. Likewise, you can't get to the thank you page without successfully booking in an appointment. So that is a quick, simple rundown on funnels. You can uh, check the stats in here. So if you're not running uh, like Facebook, don't feel like you need to put in a Facebook page just to track how the funnel's performing. You can check it right here and see its performance. But if you do want to link it to Facebook so Facebook can optimize, which um, if you're running Facebook ads, you definitely want to, then make sure to put the pixel on there.